Hello, everyone. Hello? I know you've all been waiting for this one. James is a character I shockingly haven't talked about lately on this channel. Edward and Gordon kind of get all the love from me. Today, however, we'll be completely dedicated to the splendid red mogul himself. Okay, so let's talk about James's actual basis before getting into this. James is a Lancashire and Yorkshire Class 28, a one-off variation of the class with an extended front and a pilot bogey. While it didn't exist in real life, there were allegedly drawings for this design of engine, but they never went forward with it. I, personally, don't really like the 28 for James. There's just something about how tall and lean it is that doesn't match how James is portrayed in the illustrations. He's always had a really fat boiler, even in the later drawings when they tended to be more accurate. For my model of James, I wanted something that matched the illustrations, so a 28 wasn't going to cut it. The model railway market is very limited when it comes to moguls. There are a few, but they're all outside cylinder engines, which James isn't. I knew what it was going to come down to was taking a 060 and extending the front. James was the last of the main eight I completed, as I purposely kept pushing him off to last because I was so nervous about doing this mod. But alas, one day, I decided it was time, and I ordered. And what I ordered was a Bachman J11. Using the J11 for James dates back all the way to early 2019 when I did that initial Edward Photoshop. I did one for James too, using the J11. I knew a long time ago that if I ever wanted to do James, it was probably going to be with the J11, and that's what I used. The J11 has the correct bell pair firebox, a very similar cab with the correct front window shapes, and a fat boiler and smoke box akin to the illustrations. Besides the missing bogey wheel, it was perfect. Very James. Now, personally, I don't think James actually is the J11 in my headcanon or anything. Just like how I don't think Edward is a D16. I only used it because it was the closest thing in model form. If anything, James makes more sense as a one-off build or a contractor engine ordered by the Northwestern. So I ordered the Bachman J11, and I made sure to buy the variant with the big, giant, round dome. There is a version with a flat dome, so beware to anyone who wants to use this engine. I literally almost ordered the wrong one. So first thing was first, I had to cut off the front. This was the hardest thing I've ever done in modeling. The footplate on this is solid die cast metal, and I've never cut through metal before. So I bought a hacksaw and just cut away at it. At last, it was chopped off, fairly nice and clean for the most part. I kept the buffer beam as I'd be using it later. Next step was fitting the front bogey wheel. The bogey came from a Bachman N-Class, the same N-Class I had pulled the tender from for Edward. I tested how far I wanted the wheel to stick out, and cut down the bar to it once I had found the amount of space I liked. Rather fortunately, the J11 had a screw hole in the chassis right at the front, so I was really easily able to screw the pony truck into place and still have it swivel. Now it was time to make the extended running board. This was more or less a trial and error process. First thing I did was use small pieces of balsa wood to get an idea of how far I wanted the front to stick out over the bogey. I wanted there to be enough room so the wheel could still clear it without interference. Once those were in a place that I liked, I glued them together and then added a crossover piece in the middle for extra support. And then I glued the original buffer beam on the front. I coated the thing into Mia modeling putty, and I mean coated it. Once that was dry, I sanded it all down until it was nice and smooth and flat. For his frames, I actually used the edges of an old gift card that I just had laying around. I cut some strips out with an X-Acto knife and glued them into place. The hard part was done. Now James had an extended running board. He was really starting to shape up at this point. Now that the body was ready to go, it was time for priming. I gave James a few coats of primer and then painted him up in red. The red I used is a matte acrylic brick red, again from Blick, just like all the others. It's the same red I used for the other engine's buffer beams. Once his red coat was all nice and even, I applied the lining. I strayed a bit from most depictions of James and decided against using gold lining for him. I instead opted for dark blue lining all around, just for design unity and to make my James just a bit more unique. 
I always liked how in the books, James's livery was basically an inverse of the standard blue livery, with red as the base color and blue for the lining. I like to think that when James was at Crovin's Gate Works following his first day crash, he saw Scarloe and Reneus across the way and then told the fat controller that he wanted their paint job. Just saying, they're eerily similar, brass domes and all. James's tender is the standard one that came with the J11. I'm not 100% happy with it, and I'd like to swap it out with a different one with flat sides. Perhaps a Fowler one or another N class like Edwards. But I didn't have a spare tender at the time, and its shape was close enough, so I just rolled with it. I may make him a new one in future. And that, everyone, is James the Red Engine. That's James! My most unique model of the whole collection, and one that I am very, very happy with. I've never done a mod of this scale before this or since this, and the fact the end result turned out as good as it did is still a shock to me. So, I have now covered five engines in the collection. The past couple weeks I have been working on some TV prop replicas in 00 using the Bachman Thomas models as bases. Three of them I have completed, and the others are still in process. I think for my next Tugs trains, I may stray away from the more realistic models and just shed some light on these guys, and then come back to the rest of the collection after. I'll let you all decide what you'd like to see next. Also, before I go, I want to give a shout out to Upside Now and his wonderful Thomas reorchestrated soundtrack. The James themes in this video are all from that. The man painstakingly recreated all the original themes from the show in cinematic orchestral form, and they are just brilliant. I've listened to the whole thing about a hundred times now. It is great stuff to work to. I've left a link in the description. Show this man some support and check out his work. Thanks again, as always, for watching and showing your support. I always appreciate it. See you all in the next one. Bye!